Hi everyone, good morning. Bella Vasto with Jump Consulting. If this is your first time on this, this podcast or seeing me, I am a pet business consultant, an author, a podcast host, and a Facebook strategist. So I want to get into a question today, and that's something that I've actually gotten a lot, and I, I, I really want to break it down. So it's it's basically how does blogging help me get clients? So we've talked numerous times about the types of blogs you could write, about why you should blog, about what you should blog about, about how you should promote it. We talked about all this stuff, but never once have we really talked into the strategy of how it actually gets you clients. Because a lot of people are out there right now blogging, and they're blogging just to blog. They've got someone, hi Maureen, hi Daisy, they've got someone that, they just decide like, hey, I'm going to pay you five or 10 bucks and write a blog or write whatever you want. But there's no real strategy behind it. And what that's like is it's like you're a lightweight and you're going into the heavyweight boxing ring and trying to win the champion and it's just not going to work. So what you need to do is that lightweight uh, arena is your local area. So a lot of times I see people making the biggest mistakes where they start blogging, but they don't actually include their local area in anywhere in their blog and they don't promote their blog. So what they actually did was just write an international national blog that is competing against all of the world. So let's get into it. Um, I've helped so many people do this. I've done it for my own pet sitting company. I've done it for my, my coaching company, Jump Consulting. It's why you can use us as the Google for the pet industry. We've got over 350 blogs, over 130 uh, a podcast and like over 200 videos. I basically dedicated my life to answering all of your questions. All you gotta do is use the search feature. Then I want you to kind of think about your business is the same. Relation, I'm sorry, educational marketing is something that's really big these days. So let me tell you a story. When I first started coaching about this blogging thing, I had this friend, Mark Seibel, with Doggy Steps Dog Training. And he'd been going on and on and on, but he wasn't really getting enough business that he wanted. So we actually sat down together and I taught him this blogging strategy. The results were he raised his rates. Why? Because he needed to stop the flow of people coming into his business. That's how successful it was. Hi, Lori. So it was so successful because he used this strategy and he got more clients. And so he had the decision to make either A, do I raise my rates to stop the flow or B, do I hire people so that I can actually keep all of these people coming in, right? I've also brought you the story on my YouTube channel of this pool guy who was about to go bankrupt and he didn't even have any money to, to pay his employees. And he turned that around into an international worldwide known um, company that he now doesn't just service his local area. It's around the whole country and it's called River Pools and Spas and it's my good friend Marcus Sheridan. And, and, and Marcus has taught this thing called the Big Five. And it's something you need to look up, but it's something that works. It's something that has helped me with both of my businesses and everyone else's. Another example of that is Kate McQuillan from uh, Pet, uh, sorry, from Pet Sitters Ireland. Um, she is the most incredible person ever. She's one of my good friends. She also teaches blogging, and her and I really got around Marcus about the same time. And and um, and and Kate teaches people how to do that too with the Big Five and being relevant and creating awesome content. I've also told you about Mike Alton. That's another really good resource. And Mike Alton is the blog and brute and he is fantastic. And he has so many guides and step-by-step, -step, like I use them and I create SOPs out of them. You guys, all of these different thought leaders in the blog sphere is something that you really need to start really understanding how their techniques can help you get those pet sitting and dog walking clients. And now here's the premise behind it. We Google everything. So if you're wondering what the school schedule is, if you're wondering um, what the bump is on your right arm that's purple and blue, you're going to Google it. Or even better yet, what's really happening on Google is, hey, Google, tell me where the nearest Joann's is. Hey, Google, tell me where the nearest dentist is. And it's this voice text, right? So we are either typing or voicing into Google for everything. And don't fool yourself because people are doing that for pet sitters, dog walkers, kennels, boarders, trainers. Now maybe you say, Bella, I'm a dog walker uh, or I'm a pet sitter. I'm not a boarding facility. You still need to be typing 
and writing about that boarding facility. Because if I'm voice texting and the first thing that comes up is a pet sitting company talking about boarding, well, you got me, hook. You got my curiosity. I'm going to Google to get the information. And I got news for you. Nobody else is doing this. So the way it helps you get clients is that it builds that credibility. It builds that educational marketing. And people start really um, knowing you, liking you, trusting you, seeing you as a local thought leader, someone they can turn to as a resource. Maybe your services aren't exactly right for them, but they still know that they can go to you. And that knowledge is really power, okay? So the things that we're going to blog about are things like how much does it cost? Uh, how much does pet sitting cost? in Scottsdale. If I was Googling for pet sitting in Scottsdale and that article came up, how much does pet sitting cost in Scottsdale? I'm going to click on it. Let me tell you another story. Sarah L. Sherbini up in Toronto went gangbusters nuts crazy on her website. She answered, she, she put a blog about how much does pet sitting cost in Toronto and it's her number one hitted uh, blog. I don't think I'm saying that right, but it's her number one blog on her blog. Okay. How about how does it compare with others? Like I was saying, what's the difference between kenneling my dog and having a pet sitter? Or what are people saying about it? Like, why should I not trust pet sitters in Scottsdale? I actually wrote a blog on that way back when, and it was because Yelp was hiding reviews. And so I knew Yelp was going to come up for reviews of Scottsdale pet sitters. So I said, well, I want to come up too. So I blog strategically for it. When you give people more things to see, and I think when we do a, um, a search and we see that like Rover, WAG, Dog VK, well, not anymore, um, uh, Sitter City, like there's all these like random like, like tech sites that come up. When you actually see a local business in your area, you give it a lot more attention. So what is your business saying? Is your business saying anything at all? Or are you just sitting there complaining that Rover and WAG are taking all your clients? Don't do that, you guys. So when people are grateful, to a brand, it leads to more revenue because people feel really indebted to you. They feel really excited that, hi Courtney, that you're actually there to help them. And so I want you to remember that. Now the other thing that, uh, the reason why it gets you people is because I know that as a business owner, every single one of us are overwhelmed, right? Who here is sitting around saying, hey Bella, I got all this extra time. In fact, you're probably listening to me right now knowing that you're supposed to be doing something else. Am I right? Can you let me know below? Okay, so here's the thing. I don't want to give you more stuff to do. I think if you were just to write, like, say, two blogs a month and then you upcycle it, you would be so far ahead of the game. Now, what's upcycling? I want you to listen up to my friend Brian Fanzo from iSocialFans, um, and he's got this really cool diagram that I actually put in a blog. I'll link to it here. But it shows how you create one piece of content, like this Facebook Live, and how you can repurpose it. I'll use myself as an example. I am here explaining to you something and I'm going to rip this audio and it's going to go on my podcast. I'm also going to make a one minute video, like the best one minute of this whole Facebook live and I'm going to put it on Instagram and then I'm going to take a 10 minute excerpt of this and put it on LinkedIn. Hi LinkedIn. What's up? And then I'm going to take a 220 second video and put that on Twitter. And then I'm going to download this whole video and I'm going to upload it to YouTube. And then I'm going to go back through the comments and, and answer you guys' questions as they come through. And then I'm also going to make this a blog post and have show notes. So look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of content I just created. And then here's the Mac Daddy of it all, you guys, the recycle part. I'm going to actually schedule all of this in my Agora Pulse uh, con uh my Agora Pulse um, tool, because Agora Pulse is like the best thing since sliced bread, you guys. It's it's the greatest price point. It it hits all the social media channels. It monitors all your inboxes at one spot. And I've got a special hookup for it too. So let me know if you want to jump on board. It is pretty expensive. It's like five hundred dollars for the year. But you guys, when I can create this content once. And then I can post all of this content on all those channels and then tell Agora Pulse, hey, have that come up once a month. All of a sudden, this 20-minute live that I'm doing for you has now become all of this content that just keeps coming up. It's evergreen. And I don't have to do much for it. I am all about like saving my time. 
Okay. I don't want to be like work done all the time. And this is the way we can do it. But this is how you get clients from it because now you have different people following you on different channels. Not everybody sees your content the very first time you post it. In fact, if it's if your if your website is, I'm sorry, if your <coughs> Facebook page is like many others, you're only getting two to three percent engagement. Now I know some of my better marketing with Bella students are up to twenty percent, which I'm super excited about. That's a whole side note. Um, but you got to understand that people see things at different times. So if you have this one piece of content, this blog that you're doing, and people are passively seeing it, and it feels like you're everywhere, but really you created something once and then like cut it up into a lot of different servings and served it up many different places, then you are so far ahead of the game. It's not about what the rat race, like so many of us make the mistake of we're just aimlessly writing blogs and they're not even that great of quality and they're not even that great that they're pitchy they're always talking about our company or our company name is plastered all over us or we like literally write in the blog if you need a pet sitter call me at this number like come on you guys like that is such a turn off so if we can create one blog and then chop it up into bite-sized servings and put it everywhere and we, we make our content really, really great. Long form content is something that's, that's really happening right now, that's really important, that people are really reacting to, then you can be everywhere and you can definitely get more clients. Now, writing a blog and chopping it up will help it upcycle. And so I just explained all the different ways that you can do this. If this is overwhelming to you or you just joined us a little bit late, I'm also going to put in a link to a blog article where I have this all written out because guess what? I wrote the blog first and now I'm doing a Facebook Live. And between those two things, I'm going to be chopping up this content and you guys can watch me on all my social channels and see how I reuse this. This is what I want you to do because this is going to help your exposure. It's going to help you give value and gifts to your entire community and it's not going to take you a lot of time because the biggest amount of time is creating that thesis and creating all of the explanations and then once you have that I want you to really spread your seeds you guys nobody's like planting seeds everywhere so if this has been helpful to you let me know below automation Carly yes exactly thanks for being here um, uh, good morning <laughs> and a special shout out to Aaron and Courtney um, who are also in the mastermind too so you guys, I hope that you really liked this. Let me know what challenges you face. I hope that you understand how you can actually get so many more uh, pet sitting and dog walking clients now through blogging. So it's about choosing the right kind of material, and then it's about taking that material and putting it everywhere, and then setting it and walking away in terms of being able to have different bite-sized chunks everywhere. Just because you write a blog, it doesn't mean you're gonna post it on LinkedIn and say, hey guys, I wrote a blog. And on Twitter, hey guys, I wrote a blog. And on Instagram, hey guys, I wrote a blog. You wanna talk about the actual topic on each one of the channels and almost translate it to the way that channel talks and then you want to automate it so you guys this is so exciting for me i hope you liked it this is all for you i mean i know all of this stuff so let me know if this has helped you because i am here for you if there's something that you're wondering about too let me know because like i said at the beginning of this broadcast i have been dedicating my life to answering all of your questions and being the biggest resource if you have any other questions about your pet sitting or dog walking business, I want you to go over to jumpconsulting.net and up at the top right corner, you can type in something into the search box. You will be overwhelmed with how much stuff I have. I dare you. Go and type it in, okay? And the very last thing is if you find yourself walking dogs and wanting something to listen to or you're folding laundry or you're driving, I have an incredible podcast. It's called Bella in Your Business. And I want you to look it up on iTunes and go ahead and listen to it. Scroll through, find something that works for you. We're on our 130th episode and I bring on some really amazing heavy hitters like Marcus Sheridan, like Kate McQuillan, like Mike Alton, like uh, uh, Michael Stelzner, Mari Smith, Jay Bear, all of these big wigs, you guys. It's not something you want to miss, and there's nothing else like it in the industry. So remember, guys, when life gets you down, always keep jumping.